Greetings, friends. This is Survival Doc. I'm here in Jefferson City, Missouri, the capital of the great state of Missouri, where today we're having our Guns Over America Pro Second Amendment rally. All right, for, you, for those of you who are not familiar with the organizations, OathKeepers.org. The first thing that we promise as Oath Keepers, we will not obey orders to disarm the American people. We will not obey orders to conduct warrantless searches of the American people. We will not obey orders to detain American citizens as unlawful enemy combatants or to subject them to military tribunals. We will not obey orders to impose martial law or a state of emergency on a state. We will not obey orders to invade and subjugate any state that asserts its sovereignty. We will not obey any order to blockade American cities, thus turning them into giant concentration camps. Here's a big one. We will not obey any order to force American citizens into any form of detention camps under any pretext. We will not obey orders to assist or support the use of any foreign troops on U.S. soil against the American people to keep them essential supplies. And we will not obey the orders which infringe on the right of the people to free speech, to peaceably assemble, and to petition their government for redress of grievances. So without further ado, we have our keynote speaker, somebody who uh, has been fighting the battle for a long time. We have Beth Ann, host and CEO of the Common Sense Coalition Talk Radio. So without further ado, Beth Ann. no coincidence on the same day that they are over there fighting for children and getting abortion taken away from this state and this nation. Yeah. Yeah. Abortion is an attack on our children and the future of this nation. There's a little girl here with a with a cardboard uh, <laughs> note. I would like you to come up here, pretty girl. Thank you. Abortion came to be, I'm not here to talk about abortion, please don't think I'm at the wrong rally. Abortion originated as ethnic cleansing. We as a nation have bought a lie about it being a medical procedure to save a life. It has taken more lives than any guns ever took in this nation. And these children are the future and the Second Amendment protects these children and our future here in the United States of America and in the state of Missouri. And she says, protect my future from tyranny. Thank you. Yeah. Did you yeah. 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 Shayla. Shayla. Thank you so much. You can go back and sit down. Thank you. Yeah. You know, um, I, had, I didn't really have a speech because I didn't know I was talking very long. Um, I'm going to quote our president. <laughs> oh, please don't. Whoa. I'm going to get sick. Careful. <clears throat> I got a good quote here. Come on now. I got a good one. I got a good one. He said in his speech the other day that he will put everything into this, and so will Joe, meaning Joe Biden, but, but, that only way we can change is if the American people demand it. He recognized
phrases, we are the people. Yes. Yes. Now, don't listen to these politicians when they say the word democracy. Because we are not a democracy. We are a republic. We are the people, every one of us, no matter what color you are, no matter what last name you have, no matter where you came from, you are the government. And they cannot change our Constitution, take away our Second Amendment, our First Amendment, or any of those, unless we elect them. That's right. <laughs> we haven't lost it completely, but we have compromised an awful lot. And in the compromise, every time, every time we compromise, we do this. Okay. Okay. One more time. Do you never go forward? Because we always go backwards and we lose just a little bit more and a little bit more of liberty. I reported on the air, by the way, most of you probably don't have a clue who I am, but I'm just a little gal that was born in Missouri, married a little farmer man, had five sons, raised them. Some are in the, some are in the military, some are in the ministry, Woo! some are protecting this nation, yes! this country, this, this state. You. He wears a badge, and I love him. But you know what? I do a talk radio show because I care about those children of mine. They're all grown. I raised five sons. Five, five sons. And I'm still saying, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> and I have 11 grandchildren that I'm very, very proud of. Nice. And I did get girls. I did get girls and grandchildren. <laughs> you know, I do it for them because I'm not making any money. <laughs> so I do it for them. And uh, I do it for that little girl right there. Oh. And for every one of you. Hey. Woo. I, uh, my maiden name is Sumter. Does that mean anything to anybody now? <laughs> I have some relatives that might mean something. But <laughs> my one, two, three, four, fifth great uncle was the Brigadier General Thomas Sumter. And if you watch the Patriot, the British came along and they burned his house. Man, the Patriot he had a big family, but General Thomas Sumter, uncle, he only had one child. But they burned his house down and they created a monster. They created what they call the Gamecock. And the Gamecock and the Swamp Fox led the militia in and out instead of those standing there being shot at. And they were instrumental in winning our revolution. Now there are those, talking about uh, media, there are those on Facebook who will tell you that I am paranoid, that I'm afraid of our government. I said, I'm not paranoid, I got a gun. <laughs> when you leave your house? Yeah. 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 When you go on vacation, talk about gun-free zones. When you go on vacation, do you put a sign up, I'm gone for two weeks, uh, don't come knocking. <laughs> do you think that would be paranoid if you didn't lock your, I mean, what's paranoia? It's only common sense to protect and preserve. And we've got to have some common sense about our Second Amendment. Well, you know, our government, you know, I coined a new phrase. Let's, let's see if we can get this to sweep the nation. I coined a new phrase. These men that, uh, and women and women that are elected <laughs> and supposedly representing us in D.C., they are no longer representatives. They are no longer officials. They are, and I coined this, D.C. occupiers. Yeah. They occupy offices and they cut deals. And those deals are not for you, not for me, not for this nation, not for the state of Missouri. Claire McCaskill is the worst thing that ever happened to this state. Yeah. Does she carry them? Because she doesn't think you should. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't carry my five boys with me all the time, so I carry.
You know, uh, I went to see La Mez. How many of you have done that? Don't like musicals? <laughs> <laughs> I went to see La Mez, and if you, if you know anything about the musical and the story, it takes place in France. And the, women, and the people were oppressed, oh, severely oppressed. And they chanted a song throughout the movie. Do you hear the people sing, singing a song of angry men? It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. We have a second amendment that will keep us from being slaves to any government, to any officials, if we will just stand up and say, absolutely no way, I'm not registering another gun, you're not going to limit the ammo I put in my gun, and I can have whatever kind of gun I want. <laughs> Yes, we should. Did you know? Did you know? Somebody here, Tom Tom on uh, Facebook was chatting with me a week or so ago. We were talking about how can you hold these guys official? They stand there and they take an oath to uphold the Constitution and they go into their little offices and do everything they can to break it and to do away with it. So how can we hold them accountable for their oaths? You know, it's kind of a breach of contract. Can we divorce them? I think we should. I don't know. <laughs> but... The FUPA here in the state of the Missouri, I, I had to tell Tom, I said, remember what I told you on Facebook? What's gonna change? What's gonna keep them from changing their oath? Because then they said, I pledge to the government, not to the Constitution. So they have to retake their oath, and maybe they've done that by now. But what a FUPA, but what timing. Yeah. Right now, when we're discussing all this about the Constitution, keeping them uphold the Constitution and keeping them to their oaths of office. How can we possibly do that? Well, this is how we can do that. And you know, folks, we complain about DC. I'm a long way from DC. I've never been to DC, have you? Yeah. New York. The poor people in New York, their legislatures went in in the dark of night. The dark of night. Why would you do it at night? Do you know when they tried Jesus that they did it in the dark of night? Why do you think they did that in the dark of night? They didn't want an uprising. They don't want people to know what they're doing because they're not representing you and me. They are occupying offices in D.C. and in New York and some of these in Port of Jersey. They're getting hit too. But not Missouri. We're going to stand by golly. You know, somebody, the one that told me I was paranoid, uh, he won't listen. They won't listen to anything that is concrete in evidence and statistics. But back in the 80s, Carter tried to do this and put together a panel. They were going to do this research and this study, and it kind of, it kind of uh, went backwards on them. In Florida, in the 80s, there was... Um, in nine months, there were 33 rapes and assaults on women. The women were scared. Is that paranoid? Yeah. No. So the women were afraid, and they started buying guns. Yeah. And, and the newspaper of that particular area and the police department got together and trained these women on how to use their guns. 6,000 women knew how to shoot. It was One of my deepest fears in this nation is that we have lost that true spirit of independence. And I'm, I'm gonna stop, I think I've probably talked too long for somebody who had a little short speech here. But 
Um, I'm a little short girl, but I was a cheerleader in high school. But the spirit of independence is what our founding fathers had. They came here for many reasons, but to own property was one of the biggest ones. And I don't know how many of you here are aware of the attack on rural America across this nation. There has been land grabbing. There have been rules and regulations and restrictions put on farmers and landowners and takings. And then we had the election in November. And I know we were all disappointed. I, I really was. It, got, it went the way I expected it to. But what bothers me most is if we are voting for what we can have, that we don't have a spirit of independence. I'm not looking to President Obama to protect my children or my grandchildren. I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of infringements we are facing right now. And the Second Amendment is loud right now. Don't let it die. Do not let them sneak this in underground. And they're going to try. Don't let them. We've got to stay focused. But you've got to understand the income tax has already made us slaves. Welfare has made more people slaves than the South ever did. We've got to free our people. We've got to have a spirit of independence. So I'm going to do a little cheerleader chant, okay? I want you to all join me. I got spirit. Yes, I do. I got spirit. How about you? Yeah. You're supposed to say it back louder. Come on now. I got spirit. Yes, I do. I got spirit. How about you? I got spirit. Yes, I do. letting me be silly. I want you to join me right now. There is one thing this nation was founded on, and that was God. And he has not left us. I'm tired of people saying, how can he possibly bless this nation? He already has blessed this nation. And we haven't all forsaken him. And when we go to these rallies, we need to honor him in every way we can. America
When came the time for those giants to drown? Trusted in their might, you know Yeah.